Hey guys, are you ready to transform your mind so you can transform your life? Coach Mirna brings you one-on-one -on -one coaching and expert guests weekly to help you to grow. Bro, bro. Because happiness is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. Go, go. Looking for personal growth? Let's do it. As someone who has textured and curly hair, I'm excited to share Clairol's Textures and Tones came out with a permanent color specifically for curly hair types. Say hello to the improved formula and new look while preserving curls and shine. With Clairol Textures and Tones, you get brilliant color plus moisturized hair. Permanent color that maintains your curl definition and shine. Moisture-rich formula pumped with argan and olive oil, plus zero ammonia. It's not the hair color you were born with, but the hair color you were meant to be. Claro, it's so me. Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio podcast and television show. I'm your host, Life Pitch Renee Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is a second time guest on at the show, Patricia Fuqua. Now, I love talking about relationships. I love talking about love. And Patricia is a relationship coach. And we are going to be talking today on the topic, how to deal with loneliness after 40. You know, what's going on in the dating world right now is that, you know, the man is lonely, the woman is lonely, and nobody seems to connect. And it's incredibly harder when you reach 40. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Patricia is going to be giving us some tips on dating and, uh, you know, online dating and, and things like that. So stick around if you're in that category or you know someone that is in that category, because we're going to be giving you some tips in order to help you along that journey. So welcome, Patricia. Thank you so much, Rena. It's great to be here. You're very welcome. All right. So guys, let me give you guys a brief introduction. Patricia Fuqua believes that every woman deserves to be with the man of her dreams. She also believes that single women who are looking for a partner can boost her dating life to new heights and to find and date the love of her, her life. Every woman has what it takes to make a rewarding relationship happen with a little help. Since 2008, she has supported over 500 career women over 40 to be with the man of their choice and dreams. Is not that all we want? We all want that. We go to bed every night, the single ones that is, and that's what we dream about. <laughs> not just meeting any man, but the man of our dreams, the one that has, that we can check off all those boxes. So, all right, so Patricia, as we start off, can we sh can you share your story of how you met your husband? I understand you found love after 40. And by the way, so did I. I got married at 44. <laughs> well, you know, a third time. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so yes, I still was able to snag one, you know, in later in life. <laughs> yes. Well, my story uh, goes beyond after 40. Uh, what what happened was is that I was this ambitious career woman, and I had left my little desert hometown to find my fortune in San Francisco. And I had been dating many underwhelming men, and I say underwhelming because they were American born and nice enough, and they or they were foreign, and in, because they were not familiar, they were intriguing, but nobody really grabbed my heart. And I was feeling a little bored, you know, I was working, studying, working, studying. And my roommate invited me to the biggest party of the season. And I couldn't say no, because I thought, well, maybe there's somebody there that I need to meet. So <laughs> I put on my special clothes and fluffed my afro and I and I went to the party and I had a plan. I said, I'm going to network around this room with hundreds of good looking men and women. And if when I get back to this front door, if I haven't met that guy, I'm just going home and write my report. So that was my plan. And I had 
returned to that front room and I was talking to a soldier and I felt somebody looking at me. So I turned and met the dark eyes of my husband-to-be. I swear my thoughts were, well, there he is. It's two in the morning. He finally came. So I continued talking to the soldier. Mr. Handsome finally asked me to dance. And I swear to you, Myrna, a spark flew up my hand and arm and landed in my heart. And I said, yes, this is my husband. This feels like home. And so we were inseparable for the rest of the evening. We chatted, we laughed. He invited me for a date the next Saturday, but then he had to leave. And I said, what? He said, yeah, I have to take my grandmother home. Will you be here? I said, yeah, if it doesn't take more than an hour. So he left and he returned in the time period. And we've been inseparable ever since with many, many date nights. <laughs> How old were you? Oh, I was a, I was fairly young. I was fairly young. I was I was like late twenties, I think. Oh, okay. Right. And so the story for me is that I like to deal with women over forty because they have a similar point of view that I do, and can help them move from. I like to call it the river of. Uh, loneliness that's separating them from the love of their life. So they're on the left bank, and all they need is a, maybe three steps to get over to the right bank where the love of their life lives. And that's how I came into the love industry, and I want to support women to take those steps because all they need is just a little nudge. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. People need help. Now, Now I also had um, a similar story to yours where when I met my husband, but, you know, my thing was when I saw him and I was curious because we met on a train. I was on a train and um, he was one of the people that checked that you had tickets, like the security. Yes. When I saw him, um, when we when, when our eyes met, I thought I was, you know, curious that he was interesting. Um, He saw me and thought that I was interesting and then tried to seek me out because it's a train that I took home every day after work. And he, he said, he, you know, he looked for me. And when he found me one day and he started talking to me and we talked for about half an hour, when I left the train, I knew that he was going to be my next husband because my heart palpitated, jumped up and down. I it's not palpitated, somersaulted. <laughs> <laughs> same kind of response that you had with the with the you know the thing my heart and I and I and I knew that yeah that he was going to be my next husband I was looking for one at the time too so, <laughs> yes but so was I no you have to have that expectation as yes. well as a plan and a, and yes. a it, the expectation yes. is very very important it's true you got to put your expectations, your expectors on. And um, yeah, because, you know, when you think about, dream about, you know, it's, it's what you attract. All right. So that's a good story. I mean, you met your husband earlier in life, but listen, the skills transfer, you know, and, and, and if you're able to help the loneliness of women over 40, because it gets a much more difficult in, in that age bracket. Um, uh, so one of the things that a lot of women have to do now is go to the on that online dating world because it's, you know, you went to a party and met your husband, there are not too many parties going on and you really don't want to go to a bar. Right? right. So, um, tell us about is you, do you think that online dating is the answer to loneliness for women over 40 or online will not unique for that matter? Right. Online dating is um, a vehicle made in heaven to meet the man of your dreams. The thing is, one has to have a, a very effective strategy. There are millions of people on some of the dating apps, even though they are promoted as being um, 
relationship minded people, there's still millions of people on those dating apps. So when I have clients that I want to put on the online dating apps, I have a strategy and a plan in place before they even open up the account. And the plan involves having this very specific online dating profile that is the first impression for anybody who's looking for a woman of their type. So the language has to be precise. It has to give slices of life of the values, the priorities, and the things that are very important to her, but in a fun and lighthearted way. For example, one of my clients who was 60 came to me and, and she said, you know, I just really want somebody who is a great companion who will ski with me and, and be active with me. And even if they don't like to ski, they'll be there at the lodge with my drink waiting when I come off the slopes. <laughs> Let's get started, girlfriend. So her particular profile she talked about how she loves to travel. This woman organizes groups to travel all over the world. She goes to world, major world resorts to ski in Europe as well as here in the U.S. She's very active with bicycling and hiking and all of that, you know. And so all of her pictures gave a hint of that particular activity. And of course, she was dressed very appropriately in her cute little biking outfit. When she hiked in Greece, she wanted to do a photo shoot with this beautiful gown flowing up behind her in the wind. Very dramatic. And she had, you know, other pictures of some of the adventures she had with her friends. And the particular online profile that I wrote for her and tweaked for her, because she had a pretty good one, but we tweaked it to make it even more specific and vivid, had a call to action. Now, many of your people may be entrepreneurs, and they know that if we have messages to clients, we always have a call to action. We ask them to do something. Well, her call to action was what I said earlier. Even if you don't like to ski, I would like you to have my hot toddy ready for me when I come off. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can agree to that, then let's talk. <laughs> wow. So, love it. She had so many choices as a result of that profile. And she would say to me, I don't know if I want to go farther with this guy. And I said, well, why not? And we'd go through that process. So we were sorting and selecting and making sure that she was getting exactly what she wanted. And it was a very fun experience because she'd never been in that particular position before. <laughs> and so did she find the man of her dreams? Well, she did find one. He was a little slow in, in the reaction. So we had to work a little magic with it and, and massage the energy a little bit. But she did find him eventually. Well, that's good. That's good. I love that. We're starting off strong because, you know, my sister has been single for a long time, 20 years more or more. And, uh, you know, at one point in time, she says, you know, I'm tired. Uh, she doesn't like to party. She doesn't like to go out much. So online dating was a perfect thing. <laughs> yeah. She told me that she put her profile up there and it was like a hundred and something people. And she says, well, I don't have time to go through all that. So I know in the online dating world, the man, you, you got to swipe. So even though you have a profile, how does that work? How do you? How do you tell someone that's, that don't have the time to go through all those men?
shout out to Claritin for supporting this episode and providing us with samples. This allergy season has been tough for me. The pollen number was the highest it's been in over three years. My nose was stuffed up, then it was running. I had the awful nasal drip in my throat and the sneezing. I was miserable. Luckily for those of us who live with symptoms of allergies, we can live Claritin Clear with Claritin D. Designed for serious allergy sufferers, Claritin D has two powerful ingredients in just one pill that relieve your allergy symptoms and decongest your nose so you can breathe better. If you are ready to live life as if you don't have allergies, it's time to live Claritin Clear. Fast and powerful relief is just a quick trip away. Extra Claritin D at your local pharmacy counter. You don't even need a prescription. Go to Claritin.com right now for a discount so you can live Claritin clear. Remember, use as directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, and itchy nose due to allergies. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Usually, improvements don't come overnight, but once in a while, one small fix can catapult you to the next level. If your commerce platform is holding your business back, you owe it to yourself to see what Shopify can do for you. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS system or offering organic olive oil on Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform, you're covered. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash transform, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash transform to take your business to the next level today. As someone who has textured and curly hair, I'm excited to share Clairol's textures and tones came out with a permanent color specifically for curly hair types. Say hello to the improved formula and new look while preserving curls and shine. Clairol Textures and Tone comes in 12 upgraded texture loving shades. I love the 1B Natural Black. Clairol also makes you feel proud to be able to transform your hair yourself at home, saving you time and money from expensive salon treatments. A few years ago, I decided to go to the salon for a color, and they charged me $70, and I never went again. Clairol makes you feel proud to be able to transform your hair yourself at home. Their mission is to make every woman feel beautiful and confident and help her live colorfully through accessible, easy-to-use products. With Clairol textures and tones, you get brilliant color plus moisturized hair. Permanent color that makes your curl definition and shine. Moisture-rich formula pumped with argan and olive oil and zero ammonia. It's not the hair color you were born with, but the hair color you were meant to be. Clairol, it's so me. Well, one of the things is is that call to action uh, is uh, is something that is very very helpful because basically it's a little instruction to the men that listen and read uh, to contact you if they can. Uh, address that call to action. And if they don't, you don't have to worry about it because obviously they didn't read it and they're not really um, concerned about pleasing you. So don't want that kind of man at any rate. So yeah. you down on, on the stress of trying to respond to all of them. I love it. I love it. 
hey, you know, I'm going to hook her up to you because, you know, she needs to get out of this doldrum thing. And that's a good idea. So the call to action for your client was a specific one because she was a skier and whatever, but a normal woman, you know, like, uh, so let's, let's think of somebody that me, for instance, excuse me, someone that likes to dance. So what would my call to action be that you need to, yeah, give me one <laughs> uh, for, the, you know, someone that's, because, you know, a lot of women like to dance. You know, I have a friend right now that she says to me, I like to dance. Let's go dancing. You know, she, her husband died, so she doesn't have anyone right now. But yeah, and, and dancing is my passion. Uh, yeah. So let's, my let's do that. <laughs> well, my, you know, I love dancing. So, so the call to action would be something around the dance. You know, when you, when you say dancing, there are so many dances. Uh, my husband is from the Creole background, so Zydeco is the dance that we do. And I love that dance because you can walk in there feeling sad, but you know, the minute that uh, banjo, or the, the thing strikes up, yeah, hey, all your troubles are gone. So um, it could be if that was it, I would write a call to action to say, have you ever tried Zydeco? And please contact me if you're interested in what that is. As <laughs> also, you get some kind of uh, response to that. Oh my gosh, I love so that. now you you selected the, the kinds of men who are curious and who actually read your profile <laughs> enough yes. to know what it is that you're interested in and care enough to respond to the call to action. I like the fact that we're, we're zooming in on the fact that the ones that read your profile, because a lot of them are just looking at a picture. Exactly. <laughs> and maybe look at a few, I don't know how these dating profile things, they, I think they look at your, the things that you like to do or something like that. And then they, they decide that, you know, whatever. And they're not really reading, right? Because, right. yeah, so that's pretty good. That will, that will strike out a, a lot of them. And maybe if you have something obscure, so that you wouldn't have to go through 165 men. <laughs> that, um, that, yeah. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> what was that? It's just too much. Yeah, she didn't even bother. She says, yeah. it's not time. And, you know, if I was on there too, I don't have time for that. <laughs> you know, if you're a professional woman, you got things to do. You don't have time to, to go through 165 men. And I've been hearing that that's exactly what happens, you know, because there's a swarm. And Jack, I mean, you got to, you know, whatever. Okay. So, so we talked about um, the profile needs to be specific and have a call to action. And um, so what happens after you mentioned something about, you know, going through and selecting. So. For women who are, you know, have never been on an online dating profile, um, because when you're talking about women over 40, that's not their cup of tea, right? The millennials are on there all the time. They're talking about Tinder and they're talking about all these different things. But the over 40 woman, it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be uncomfortable for them to do that. So, so you you, you select you, you they, they meet someone like you. Um, or to do on their own, and they they have a profile, mm. and then they, what happens next? Do you, do you well, know? yeah. What happens next? <laughs> well, what happens next is we look at her appearance because we're managing that first impression. Women have basically seven seconds to make a good impression in real life, and online it's probably even shorter. So the idea is to present herself with hair, makeup, clothes, everything on point. Take the photos. There needs to be five to six photos, headshots, um, three-quarter shots from the waist up, full shots because men are visual creatures and they like to know what the woman looks like. So you're gonna the woman is going to present herself in a way that is very attractive and that she feels comfortable with. And I help them with that. So it's style update, right? 
for dating. My career women are very, very good at being competitive and getting lots of accolades in the career sector. And what has happened over time is that I'm seeing that women work out of the masculine energy, which is go out and get what it is that you want to be very focused on the goal and they don't wait around for things to come to them. However, dating is a little different because woman and man, if you're interested in a man, the idea is that you come from your feminine energies, which is to be beautiful and to set up everything so that he will feel comfortable to approach you. You're still going after it, but you're not coming at it like that, right? So that's why we present with the attractive uh, appearance and the online profile, all of those things are on point. Now, all these men are going to come to this attractive woman. They're going to be attracted first by the pictures. And then if they're relationship minded, they'll read a little bit more about her. So they'll have some kind of idea about what she, where she's coming from. And when they're interested, they will call and ask her um, to talk. They'll send an email, a text. Some sites have videos where they will ask to set up a call so you get the first meeting. Now, for our my clients, the idea is just to feel the energy coming from this man to see if she likes how she feels in his presence. Not about, oh, this is the man of my dreams, but just to see how, how it feels, the energy feels. And... If it's okay, they can continue talking for a couple of times, but her idea at the back of her mind is that she wants to meet him as soon as possible in some public place so she can really check this guy out and see if she wants a second date. So it's a step-by-step -step process that I uh, encourage my ladies to do because learning a stranger takes time, unlike what I did. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He jumped right in. <laughs> so did I, by the way. But, um, uh, but yeah, this one lasted. I jumped right into my other two, and it didn't work out. Yeah. But, um, but, but what I... the difference was? Is it because you had more experience? No. <laughs> I'm going to be totally transparent. This one didn't work very well at the beginning either because I jumped right in and didn't know much. But as because I was older, uh, my pastor would say you develop a stickiness, right? So after a while, then the stickiness happened. You get to, I get to understand his ways. You get to understand mine. But when I was younger, I would just leave and, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, even, even now, it was thinking back about the relationships that I just left because some minor thing wasn't right. You know what I mean? And, um, and this relationship, you know, we worked it out, <laughs> you know, just, I remember my, my, my husband had a, a best friend that we went to their wedding and on their honeymoon night, he's calling him to pick him up. <laughs> the wedding broke up with the, you know, so there's some women that don't take crap, you know, you didn't do this, but we're done. And I was one of those. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, it was just maturity, I guess. And learning that everything is not perfect, right? That exactly. Fault, including me, right? Go ahead. Well, that, that's, that's the thing. I think women over 40 are mature enough so that they can know that in reality, no one is perfect. Right. The idea is to decide on the top priorities that you right. have, must have, and the rest of it, you just kind of deal with it, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, time is running out. You, know, you can sit around and wait for the perfect man, and you'd be in your rocking chair at 85, still waiting, right? 
right? Like, you know? <laughs> so that's what the difference was. You know, I was a little hothead and thinking, hey, you know what? I'm looking for the perfect person. And then I realized that, you know, I was probably the reason that some of these things were happening because you all realize that everything is circle. You know, you think the guy's doing something, but he's reacting to what you're doing and then you're reacting to what he's doing and all that stuff. So, yeah, so that's a difference. Um, so, all right. So, um, so do you think that online dating is a little bit more difficult than meeting someone, let's say, you know, I met my husband on a train, you met him as ears as a party, some people will meet people at work. Um, uh, do you think it's a little different where you're trying to decide if, this is the relationship you want to stay with for a little bit. Do you believe in magic? Twilight Wing is a professional spiritual healer who wants to help you access the spiritual realm to create change in your life. Do you require healing? Are you bothered by entities in the fourth dimension and would like to banish all unwelcome spirits? What about money? Twilight Wing can help you clear your money blockage. Visit Twilight Wing's Magic on Etsy. Get one-in-one service and trusted five-star spells that have worked since ancient times to discover wealth, rebuild your relationships, and help you find success. Visit Twilight Wings on Etsy by searching for Twilight Wings Magics and regain control of your spiritual well-being. That website again is T-W-I-L-I-G-H-T-W-I-N-G-S-M-A-G-I-C-K-S. How does select criteria work? That's a good question. What I like to do is encourage my clients to... Um, be self-aware and when they are self-aware they know what they really prefer to have in their lifestyle for example I really preferred a man who had integrity and who valued family and who was financially stable now two of those qualities uh, my husband to be at that party showed me that same evening, mm-hmm. he had to go take his grandmother home. Family, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he said he was coming back within the hour. And you could be sure I was checking my watch because I, I, did, I was done with this party. I had already met someone <laughs> for me at the moment. I like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. So he did come back in time. So you know, uh, two of them, and I, and I knew that if we dated over time, I'd find out. It be financial part, right? Financial part, yeah. And right. so, when a woman knows what who she is, what she values, then she can now make the decision about how do I feel about this person? Do they represent the values and priorities that I value? So she's not asking the question, "Oh, will he like me? Am I sexy? Am I pretty enough for him?" No. <laughs> Yeah. Those are not her question. One power. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So you, do you teach your clients that? Because I'll tell you something. The way I used to pick men are like, do I think I want to kiss them? It's, you know, when I look at him, do I think I want to kiss them? And if I don't want to kiss him, then no. <laughs> That's how I pick them. But now, you know, they're, they're, they're saying that, you know, when you... Like you said, you're looking for those things, you know, whether um, one of the things is, you know, that I have as my motto is, and I learned that because I spent, you know, more than half my life in sales is that you got to honor your word. You know, when you make a promise, you need to keep it. Right. And that's how I live my life. And, you know, I look for that in a man. If you're saying that you're going to come over at seven o'clock or, you know, you're going to pick me up or we're going to go out and. You know, there's and 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 you you know you 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 honor that. You know what I mean. So that's one of the things that I look for too. But 
But that comes after I decide whether I want to kiss you or not. <laughs> if I don't want to eat it. If I, I think, yeah, no, then we're not going any further. <laughs> well, that's perfectly valid because that spark in my heart was the determining factor for me. Those There were so many guys at that party. There were like four guys to one woman. And, you know, they were all well-dressed and, and college men and the whole nine yards. But they were nice enough, but underwhelming to me. So I was like, oh, okay. And so I had to have that spark. That spark, of course. Yeah. So which what brings me to the question, um, do you tell your ladies to look for chemistry in that first meeting in person? Is that the purpose of the first meeting in person? Because you can talk online forever and find out everything. You can find all those things out that you just mentioned, right? But the spark can only be, be ascertained when the person is in your presence or when they touch you or when they kiss you, I think, right? Yes, most most of the times, yes. And so that's why I urge them to meet them in the flesh, so to speak. And always in a safe place in public because they are still strangers. And, you know, yeah. we want my, every- my, my daughter has a friend that would meet men online and bring them over to her house. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. no, I've never heard that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it, it's very, very important to be in their physical presence. But, you know, what starts to happen is once um, we work together, uh, things happen like the story that, of one particular client. We started out working online, but she became so confident and so self-aware that she was attracting men in brick-and-mortar places so she went into a party for her relatives. She walked into the restaurant and she joined the party and a man across the room sent her a drink with a note. Oh, wow. And she said, you know, I'm here with my family. I don't, I, no, I can't be coming over there talking to you. And so anyway, I, I would said to her, listen, you need to be open and aware. Yes. Whoever is approaching you because yes. they sends you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Don't be saying no, 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 honey. Be <laughs> open to that and see what comes of it, you know? And um, it, she met a really great guy that she developed a relationship with in the ticket line at a concert because she and her girlfriend went to a concert and he uh, approached her by saying, You look like my soulmate. You're kidding me. No. Those were his exact words. And wow. with her suitor all weekend, he was bringing her drinks and, you know, sitting close to her and what do you want now? And, you know, he was very, wow. very attentive. Attentive, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And so she said, I know this is a Patricia moment, so I'm going to just be a, a chill about it. I'm just going to let him be here. <laughs> And we had you. Yeah, she she yeah. had incidents like that. And that has happened with other women as well. You know, they just need to get that little nudge, get the coaching to open their minds. Because basically there are three steps to meeting the man of your dreams and moving over that river of loneliness. You need to have a mindset that's open, you know, and you need to be working from a vision of what you want to experience and you need that dating strategy and those three steps are like stepping stones across the river and and he's waiting for you everybody has somebody over there who is their best possible partner i believe that there's a lid for every pot if you remember the old direction yes yes that's true it is absolutely true you know, um, you see people that you don't think should be together, but um, there is a lid for every pot. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And it's That's an exciting, absolutely true. Mm-hmm. It's an exciting yeah. adventure, and I adore helping women to get clear on those three steps and just take those little baby steps. One woman came to me 
when I first started this business and she looked at me and she said, Patricia, I have been alone for 16 years. There are no good men. They're all married to my friend. <laughs> That's just beautiful. And she's very good. Well, you could come to that. Uh, uh, you could come to that conclusion. Trust me with, you know, the, the one that's been around you. Yes, it's a yeah, very yeah. small pot. <laughs> yes. A pretty small pond, I should say. Uh, yeah. You know, men that, that you, yes. Anyway, I believe that too. She had been talking to her husband, her friend's husbands, and they understood her and, you know, and were patient with her. And she wanted that in a date. So I said to her, how many do you need? And she said, just one. And I said, well, we can do that. So we went through the coaching. We had to change her mind, though, because we had to change it to, there's one good man for me, and it's my job to find him. Instead of no good man. Got it. Got yeah. it. Right. It's right if you paint yourself in a corner like that. So you have right. to be careful of what stories you tell yourself. Mm -hmm. So I worked with her. We got the mindset working. Now we had the vision. She was afraid to marry anybody because she didn't want to be responsible for their bills. That was her big obstacle. So she got engaged. Well, let me tell you the story leading up to that. <laughs> I sent her to Las Vegas because that is her happy place. Mm -hmm. I said, dress well, go by yourself, don't take your friend. Go to an upscale hotel and keep your eyes open. And then tell me what happened. So she went a and a celebrity entourage was coming through the lobby of Caesar's Hotel. She was pressed up against this man. And she didn't turn around to look at him because she was trying not to uh, be too obvious. But he felt really nice. But, you know, she was trying to be cool. Anyway, when the celebrity passed on through, he asked her for a drink. Who? The man that she was pressed up. Oh, okay. All right, right, right. Okay. And so that was the beginning of their dating. And 12 months later, she was married to this fella. It's a beautiful story. But in the middle of it, she got cold feet because she didn't know how much money he had because she was concerned about those bills. So we worked out a formula for her to find out how much he had and if she would be responsible for his bills. And there's a formula for everything in the work that I have. And so I told her how to sit down and talk to the man and get information like a grown woman. Don't scream and yell. Just talk to the man, okay? Well, it turns out this fella had enough money for her bills, his bills, and a small village in Africa, you know? It, right. <laughs> so uh, it was okay, you know, she because of the work she had done leading up to this whole meeting, that's what the universe brought her. Right. Well, you know, that's a good point to stick a pin in for a minute. Um, one of the reasons my sister has been probably 16 years, I told you almost 20, is because she always saying that she don't want to have someone to come and take the little she's got. Now, we're African-Americans. You know, there's a lot of African-American women that are doing well, and they don't want to go with a man that maybe is not doing so well. He doesn't have a perfect job. Maybe it's just making a little bit of money. Um, what do you, what would you advise someone in that scenario? Now, your, your client, you know, um, sounds like she was well off in, in, um, in a different stratosphere. It's not perfect word, but I'm, we're talking about the, the lonely woman that makes a hundred thousand dollars a year and, um, there's someone that she's dating that makes 30 per se. Does that matter? <laughs> well, this is what I always say. What are your top priorities? Your top three priorities? What are your deal breakers? 
Because if she is bothered by his 30 grand a year, don't go with the man. It's going to be miserable for him because you're going to be saying things, acting in ways that make his life miserable. And you're going to be miserable, too. Don't don't even go there. She's going to hurt his pride because men, you know, have egos. Right. Yes. Okay. Nobody wants to be put down, you know. And so just do herself a pay, just do herself a favor and and go for the man who is more on in line with the kind of salary that she has. Especially if she's self aware. I understand is like listening to podcasts. Um there's like 1% of men. Yeah, that's they call them high value men or something. It's like 1% of them. It's not a big pool. <laughs> it's not a big pool. And are we talking Americans, though? Because there are... Yeah. 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 Certainly don't have it. <laughs> but, right. So we're talking Americans. There's, you know... Yeah, there's a there's a podcast that's dedicated just to this. You know, and I listened a couple of times um, where you're talking about women that want this high value man and there's like one percent of them so my personal take is that you should go for love that's you know i'm a romantic right yeah. yes well i'm a romantic too but i'm also a realist in that um, i know that if there's something that i don't respect or something that i don't want it's better to leave it alone right okay and if women are coming from that point of view where the money is so important to them, right. they would that they would put down their partner, then just leave the man alone. Don't bother him. Do something else. Well, put him down. They wouldn't pick him up. <laughs> right. You know. Right. I had a woman who was very, very affluent. She was in the C-suite, and she came to me, and she said, we were working on a, a a program, a day's a VIP program, and she said, "What do you think about me going out with this fella?" And she described this man. Now she's in the C-suite. She's been working all her life. She's very ambitious. She has all these accolades, and this is man is just starting out in his career. He is uh, a man who likes to do things in a nonprofit way. Mm. So she's telling me, showing me that she's really, really interested in the material life. And if she goes with this man, I'm seeing all kinds of trouble for both of them. So I shared with her, I said, you know, I think you would make him miserable after a few months. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't be happy with them. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm I'm all for people getting along and and being happy. I, I don't want to see people unhappy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Bible calls it unequally yoked too. Yes. You shouldn't be unequally yoked. So you're very right. Um, and if you are, it's because you're you're settling. And when you're settling, you're correct. Um, it's it's still at the back of your mind. It's going to come out in your pores. <laughs> it's going to come out in how you treat the man. It's going to come out in things you say. <laughs> so, yeah, but then guess what? You're going to be lonely, right? So to me, tomatoes, tomatoes, you know. So, all right, well, you said something a minute ago that I want to um, I want to explore. What is a dating strategy? The dating strategy um, it involves the plan that you have to meet the man of your dreams. And when people work with me, we use the online system because we are very, um, very, very uh, effective in using it yeah. so that they're attracting the men that they would like to meet. I only put them on the accounts that have those kind of relationship men. We write the online dating profile to attract those kind of men. Their presentation will attract those kind of men. And that's what happens. We set the energy 
the name of my company is Manifest Your Soulmate Academy. And so we work with the energies that will attract what they think about most. Mm -hmm. And so that's why um, that's part of the strategy. But what happens is that through the coaching and through the conversations and the topics that we discuss, their confidence and their self-awareness gets stronger and stronger so that they are able to come up with their own customized version of this online dating um, strategy that I give them. So they're able to decide what their questions are that they're going to have in conversation, the prompts. That's have. a working one. Yes, yeah. and because it will bring out the values of the fella mm -hmm. and, and also share a little bit about themselves. They're uh, aware of how to position themselves as the queen who is not interviewing her suitors but she is in no big hurry to meet him. So she's there in the present, paying attention to how she's feeling and what he's saying so that she can make a decision if she wants a second date. That's her only job is to get to the first date. I love it. If she wants a second date. Okay. And if she does want the second date, then we have a process where she's what she says, how she's moving in this in the plan to get to know him better, so that it's just a progression of steps. Wow, well, women tend to get into this fantasy land, and um, and so it's important to have the foundation there uh, before they move there. I love it. Now, yeah. um, in the, on the first, second, or third date, are they looking for red flags? Do they set up in their profile red flags or, you know, I would say a line in the sand? They know what their red flags are from the get-go. You know, if they feel um, threatened, unsafe, uh, mm -hmm. it, get ahead that there's something off about him and they don't know what he is. Okay. Any any kind of any kind of thing where they feel uncomfortable is a red flag. And so I ask them to pay attention to their gut. I'm one of those people who, who moves on instinct. Yeah. Women has it and they shouldn't use it. Yes, that's good. That, that's why we have it. You know, yeah. and so uh, it's important that they pay attention to uh, how they're feeling because uh, the everything is energy. So any kind of vibe they're picking up from this fella, they need to pay attention to that. And that's why I ask them to meet him in public places. Mm -hmm. because he's a stranger. He may be in, uh, intelligent and look really good on paper, but he's still a stranger. So... Um, I want them to be safe and savvy at the same time. Yes, yes, that's very good. Good information. Wow, I learned so much from you today. I think the last time we, you just said something about soulmate. I think the last time you were on, that's where, that was our conversation. Um, uh, you know, how to, meet, how to meet your soulmate. So today we're concentrating on uh, your dating profile and the online dating and dating strategy and and those things, which is which is very important, yeah. Because if you don't want to be lonely, then we're not getting you directly to marriage. You're just trying to get you to some companionship, right? <laughs> yeah, we're taking steps. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> and who knows who you'll meet? You know, because yeah. I had the house. I had clients who have come to me. Uh, well, one woman read my book, Manifest Your Soul Made, and she. Um, did all the exercises. She'd had two divorces and she decided that she was going to do it right this time. So she met this man, we'll call him Elias. He was everything that she could ever dream of. And they were completing each other's sentences on the first date. In fact, he was so enamored with her, he wanted to marry her, like, you know, the coming weekend or something. And she said, no, no, no. That's a little bad. <laughs> <laughs> and so 
But she met him in November, and they did marry in February. And she sent a note saying that uh, she felt cared for, respected, and loved like she'd always wanted to feel, but never had before. And it was because of her selection process. She was aware of uh, the strategy of how to be with this fellow so that she could find out if he really was truly what he said he was. And he was. He passed all the tests, so she she married him. And it was great. I was happy to hear about that. Yeah, this must be rewarding work. There's no better work than hooking up somebody or helping someone find a, a relationship or a partner. Because I know you know that 85% of her happiness comes from relationships. So the people, the women, men that are out there all alone, they are not happy because you need someone in your life in order to help you. Not necessarily complete you like the movie says, but to share your life with, right? Yes. Yes. We we are not made to be by ourselves. No. No. So life is much more fun if you have somebody to share it with. The other Downs and sideways. I I look at relationship like a dance. You know, mm-hmm. two steps forward, two steps back. You have your partner. It can be a tense like <laughs> it's like the tango. Half <laughs> and it can be flowing like the waltz. But you know, yes. together and yes. that's great. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I mean, yes. Like I said, I'm a romantic. Um, and I love love and I love partners and I love men and, you know, doing all the nice things like dancing and dinner and vacations and all that stuff. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very, um, I, I I don't want to use the word bad, but it's the only one I got bad. If you don't have anybody to, to do those things with, you know, some people have their children. My sister goes with her mom. (laughs) That's our relationship. They travel the world together and do things together, you know. And that, yes, it's fulfilling and, in, in in, 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 you know, checks one of the buckets. At least she has someone to do something with. But yeah, that's why I, I love that. All right. So we had a fantastic conversation. Um, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are listening that would want to get in touch with you because, yeah, you know, getting that help in order to, you know, meet the man of your dreams. It's, yeah, it's very good. It sounds like you have some great success. So yeah. tell our listeners where they can connect with you. You already gave me your website. You said manifestyoursoulmate.com. That's the website. It's manifestyoursoulmateacademy.com. But uh, it's a long name. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so yes. And, um, you, your book is Manifest Your Soulmate? Yes, it's uh, one of the bonuses for the program, uh, the three-month program that I have to help people get ready to uh, find and date that man of their dreams. I also work with men, some men, and uh, but mostly women. And so it's it's very rewarding work. And I'd love for people to come and get the freebie, which is a checklist on how to find and date the man of your dreams and make a a strategy call appointment. That would be fabulous for them. And I could help them with some more strategies. That's awesome. All right. So we've got the manifestyoursoulmate.academy.com. Then we've got your book, Manifest Your Soulmate. Um, And on there, you're saying that you've got a a course, a program, a three-month program. There's a three-month program, but everybody goes through the strategy call for I can and see what's up with them and if I can help them with my information. All right. And what are your social media handles? I'm on Instagram and at Ask Patricia F as in Fuqua dot com. Ask Patricia F. And I'm on Facebook as Patricia Fuqua One. Okay. 
Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, this is an excellent conversation, Patricia. I loved every moment of it. Um, uh, I will have a transcript of my conversation with Patricia on the show page, which is myhelps.us. I would also link out to her website, her book, and her social media handles so you can get this information. So definitely book a strategy call with her if you are in the mindset that you do not want to be lonely anymore and you want some help to find the man of your dreams. I was listening to a podcast the other day and the guy was saying that, you know what? If you can't afford me as a coach, you can at least buy my book. It's $20. <laughs> so again, so I'm going to use that. You know, if you can't afford Patricia's program, you can at least pick up a copy of her book, right? You're going to learn a few things and maybe it's not even $20. So yes, I will link out to those. And um, yes, you know, the first part in the mindset is do something, right? Don't just wait around. Become active in your life. Active participant, which means you do something. You go out, you do something, you learn something, and uh, then you put it into practice. So, so Patricia, thanks again for um, uh, being on the show as a second-time guest. Um, that's amazing. Thank you guys for um, tuning in to this week. Transform your mind on, you know, love after 40. <laughs> You know, and you're, you don't have to get in your rocking chair and say, hey, you know, hey, this was, you know, accept it. You don't have to accept it because the men are looking, you know, and you're looking. So you need to figure out a way to come together. So any last words, Patricia, as we wrap up? Well, I love the idea of there's a lid for every pot. And I believe every woman and every man should be happily yoked. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. If you're, you know, she just talked about her client at 60 or 70. You know, I was watching a movie with Jane Fonda the other day. And I think she's in her 80 and she's still dating. <laughs> That's Jane Fonda. <laughs> exactly. You know, you don't have to, you have to pack it up at any point in time. Right. Oh, oh. oh. Louise Hayes was married in, uh, in her 90s, I believe. So, yeah. Exactly. You don't have to pack it up. Do you not have to pack it up. You know, uh, when I was getting, was, was it me? There's some reason that I, was not me? There was some reason that I went to, right, this is my daughter, I think. I went down to City Hall um, just before New Year's, right? Because um, everybody seems to like being married on New Year's Eve and I mean, my daughter, I mean, I got married in New Year's Eve because it's always been my dream to get married in New Year's Eve. So I passed it on to her. And you would see the older folks down there at City Hall. Trust me. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, I was so surprised. They were like in their 80s and they're there getting their marriage license. See us. <laughs> Love happens at any age. Right. Uh, it's, uh, all right. Yeah, so this has been a pleasure. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you're listening to this on iTunes, we'd love for you to rate, review, and subscribe. And if you're watching this in YouTube, would love for you to subscribe. Also, leave a comment. Hey, you know, and um, tell us your journey into finding the man of your dreams after 40. Patricia, thanks again. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, namaste.